Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the tribe, to another mobile gaming video. Today we are going to be looking at the officer skills within Age of Origins. Thank you, Age of Origins, for sponsoring this video. Let's break this down. You may be asking yourself, Scribble, what are you talking about today? Well, today we are looking at the commander skills within the game. If you look at the little bottom right icon over here, you can see there are a list of commander skills that are available to you that give you sort of short term instantaneous benefits. You can see over here we've got, for example, a harvest that will give you six hours worth of your um, your resource gather output essentially in one go. You've got mobility recovery that will give you an instant 50 mobility. The interesting thing about this is it can actually boost you beyond the normal typical max of 100 mobility. So if you are capped out, you can use this and gain 150 and then you just spend it as you normally would. Down here, you've got the gather speed up. So that's going to increase the generation rate of your resource gathering capabilities. Over here, you've got recall all, which will allow you to return all your troops that are currently traveling straight back to the base. OK, it's quite useful, but I'd say more niche. Over here, we've got fast expansion, and this increases the max limit of fleet troops by 10% for one hour. That's actually quite a useful one. Battle SOS over here. Your next solo attacks, no troops will die until the wounded in the hospital exceeds the max limit. So obviously very, very useful for attacking. And then slaughter. In your first solo attack, after activating the skill, kill 10% of wounded enemies in this battle. Limited to attacks on other cities and resource mines, subject to the result of your first complete battle. So all very useful, but how do we get them and what else is involved? Say no more. Your boy Scribble is here for you. Click on your little face up here. It's a beautiful face. It looks a lot like me, only his his beard is a little bit more pronounced than mine. Movember, though, ladies and gentlemen, Commander Skills is exactly what we are looking at here. And you will immediately see that it is broken up into two different segments. You've got the war segment and the development segment. How do you earn skill points? Very, very straightforward. When you level up your commander, you will be allocated, I think it's three or four skill points per round. You can do this by using commander XP, by just completing objectives, completing tasks, doing more or less anything will give you a little bit of commander XP. But you can, of course, use all those items that are set down in your inventory straight from this tier here, uh, from this page here to give you a bit of a boost. When you level up, obviously, your level will increase. There'll be more XP to get to the next level, and they will allocate you or provide you with a certain number of commander skills. So broken up, like I said, into both war and development. Now, personally, I think most people should focus on war. I like to start off at the beginning, going through the development tab just so that I can reach down here and get that mobility recovery. It's not massively important, guys. It's probably better in your interest to focus on war. But now that I've got it, I can't live without it. So let's quickly look at development. So in order to progress to the next tier, you actually have to max out the points invested. So in order to get load boost one, for example, you need to have five out of five on building speed one, which increases your construction speed by 5%. Then load boost over here gives you uh, increased troop capacity in your loadouts. Then you've got harvest over here. This is one of the abilities that we'll have as an active ability in our base. You use it, boom, instantly get six hours worth of output from all of your resource gathering. Obviously, the bigger your base, the higher the level your resource gathering uh, units or uh, buildings are, the more you're going to gain from the benefit of this. Okay, so then you've got your first broken path. You can choose to either go over here to food production or oil output. These are relatively straightforward, guys. It'll then go down into, you know, enhanced gathering capabilities before getting to the final node there. So make a choice. I do not advise you do both until you are very late game. Just choose one of them. I've chosen to go for food production, but honestly, you could just as easily go for oil output. So this one is the production is obviously inside your base. And the gathering is when you go out into the world map. Perhaps you go to an elite mine or you go to an elite oil field or whatever that's within your alliance. This here increases the speed at which you gather those resources out in the world map. All right. So all I'd advise, if you're coming up to a fork path like this, just invest in one of them. You do not need to do two of them in this instance in order to get down to the next node, which is research time, which is useful. Always should be researching at all times, guys. So I went down research time into depot capacity. So that is sort of um, the protection you've got from being attacked. The size of your depot is sort of the guaranteed resources that you manage to hold on to should an attack breach your wall. 
And then we've got lots of options down here. So I chose to go down the mobility recovery route because I wanted this active ability here. That gives me 50 additional mobility whenever I use it. I wanted this. So I went down the left-hand path, mobility recovery, increase the speed at which I gain mobility, which you need when you're going out to attack monsters on the map, or if you're going to, um, you know, do raids, or if you're going to attack cities or anything like that, you need mobility. And then this one here is monster attack speed. So this increases our speed when we are attacking monsters on the world map. 50% boost is actually quite good. Now, you could, of course, go down and get better food production and food gathering or oil gathering and then additional building speed and go all the way down there. Some of these abilities are actually quite useful. Gather speed doubled for two hours is not bad. Um, obviously, you can replicate that as well with boosts, short term boosts and actually stack them. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend going too far into this until you focused a little bit on the war side. So the war side then I feel is a little bit more important because obviously this plays into a lot of your PvP and PvE elements. So same as before, if you want to progress through, you do not necessarily have to do all three of these nodes to get down here. Battle flag right at the start increases troop recruitment speed, which is great. Obviously, always should be recruiting additional troops to your army. However, my recommendation when it comes to the attack, go with long range attacks. They're going to be doing the, long, uh, the most amount of your damage. And if you are focusing on getting lots of snipers, for example, you're going to want to have this long range attack as a first priority before you come back and look at the rest of it. OK, we get the active ability recall all, which lets us bring troops back to the city instantaneously. Very useful ability there. When it comes to the next trio, I focused on melee HP. So that's your frontline troops. And my reasoning behind this was if I want to have units tanking at the front, I want them with the most hit points in the game. OK, so I'm focusing on melee HP instead of, say, long range HP, for example, or even mid range HP, because they're going to be the front line. They're going to get hit first. So I want them to be as tanky as possible. Now, I might come back and then start looking at long range HP, but that's really for later on. I want to try and progress down that skill tree at a faster pace before I start thinking about what could I have gone back and gotten. So then we get fleet speed, uh, fleet speed. Fleet speed. We get fleet speed one. That increases our fleet speed just anywhere out on the world map. Useful to have, but not a game changer. Now, down here is where I'm currently at. And alongside the same thoughts that we had around melee HP, I've decided I want melee defense to be my priority next. So I'm investing everything in melee defense and we're going to go down to wounded capacity one. I might come back later on and get some of these middle ones here, but that's that's not my main priority right now. So where am I going to go after this? How am I going to continue to progress this? Well, obviously, I'll have to get 10 in wounded capacity, increasing our max wounded units, then battle flag two, even faster, um, even faster troop recruitment speed. Apologies, I can speak. Then after that, I will go back over here to long range attack two. I want to try and stack that damage as much as possible. This is a percentile bonus. So the more uh, I invest in it, the better overall it will be stacking with the previous percentile bonus for my long range troops. Then we've got fast expansion as an active ability. Once again, we can use it to increase the fleet troops by 10% for one hour, which is quite useful when you're going out and attacking and doing PVE elements, you know, sort of doing your Mother Doom events and that sort of business. Having more um, uh, having more uh, max fleet troops means you can send out more of your troops in one go. Then it's going to be fleet speed. We'll go back over here. I'll once again focus on melee HP too. So getting that front line as tanky as possible. We'll get the battle OS SOS over here. Um, I won't go too much into that, but it will be quite useful. And then again, melee defense too. If you're going to do this, you really want to try and min max guys. So much defense, much HP as possible in your frontline troops, much damage output on your back line, wounded capacity. And then finally, we'll get that slaughter. Now, once I've done all that, I will probably look to try and increase the tankiness, the survivability of our other units, probably focus on close range and long range and then finish up with the mid range in the end. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to should you actually invest in a little bit of the development, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but I think that so much of this game revolves around going out and doing PVE engagements as well as PVP engagements that this sort of thing can you can afford to waste it. 
Now, if you have done some mistakes, as it were, within your commander skills, you can actually reset them. You can get these commander skill resets in the game. I'm not entirely sure where you find them right now, but I have nine on them at the minute. I think they can come from daily logins and various events that pop up. So if you have made a mistake, you can reset them. Don't worry too much about it. Just use one of these and reallocate the skills. Highly recommend you be focused instead of try to spread out your skills wide and broadly. Keeping that focus will help you progress at a better pace and you get you more benefits out of those skills in one go. But I want to know, guys, what skills are you investing in for your commanders? And are you having a lot of fun with it? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the very next video. Peace out and big love.